How to build and distribute a Python application using Nix. Here's what we're going for. If you copy this code from the article on GitHub, you don't have to change a single thing. Just paste it into your NixOS config file, save it and then run sudo NixOS rebuild switch, let it run. And when it's done, you should be able to run sample app Python and it starts up a web server. If you go to localhost 5000, you'll see a hello world message. If you clone down this repo and go to the 178 folder, go to the sample app Python folder and do a Nix build, this will build it locally from source. Result bin sample app Python, you can run that just the same. If you cd.die and go to the NixOS folder, this is our NixOS test bed, which you can also run Nix build. And then you can run dot slash result slash bin slash sample app Python, same thing. Everything we're talking about today boils down to four steps. First, we create the Python application to package up. Then we run it on NixOS using local only. Then we do some testing with default.nix, which enables us to figure out how to build and install from GitHub instead of from a local file. Before we do though, why bother? Well, this is PageKey and we're all about taking back tech. What's that mean? In short, tech is good. Big companies build tech. That's also a good thing. We wouldn't have the smartphone or anything like that otherwise, but we don't understand the tech. We can't open it. We can't inspect it. We can't take it apart. We depend on those big companies for that. So that might be bad. So we learn about tech. We build things ourselves from scratch and then we become independent again. That's the goal. And I throw back to the 50s and 60s. Remember when everyone had their own car and they could work on their own car? This is you working on your own email server. This is your friend working on your own self-hosted application of some sort. It's all good fun. Okay, so we're gonna create the Python app and our directory tree is gonna look like this, very simple. We have a source folder and then we have this sample underscore app underscore Python, which is our package folder. We have a knit.py to make it a package. We have main.py and then we have other.py just so that we can demonstrate importing from files within the package. We also have default.nix and setup.py. In main.py, we import Flask and make a little web server. We also import some var from the other file. And then our app is created. We have a hello world route, and then we just run the app in our main method and demonstrate that we imported a variable. Okay, the default.nix to build our app is actually quite complicated and it is the meat of what we're doing today. So you'll see that we have a function here and that function accepts packages as its primary argument, but we also have source and subdir, which we'll see later why that's important. But the main part of it is broken into three pieces. We have package, where we turn our code into a Python package or wheel, if you will. Then we have the environment where we bundle in the Python interpreter used to run that package with the installed package and all of its dependencies all installed into a Python environment. And then the app provides a dot slash whatever to run the app. So you don't have to worry about how do I run Python? How do I do this? How do I do that? All of that is included and you just have to, as the user, type dot slash name of script or executable and it runs the application. So for this first piece, we'll use build Python package, which is built into Nix packages to create our own little wheel package that we can install. And we just have to fill in some metadata and this source piece, which you'll see why these two variables are useful when we do the GitHub part. But we have build inputs, which are only required to build the package. You need setup tools and wheel to build a wheel. And then the propagated build inputs, we can install the Flask package because we need that at runtime. So that's why it's propagated. And then a little bit more metadata down here. And that's it. The next piece is the environment. Again, we can just use the build env built into the Python on Nix packages. We just have to override it to have some extra libs. We need Flask and we will refer to the Python package that we just built. We'll put both of those as dependencies of this environment so that they get pulled in as installed packages. Last but not least, we'll pull it all together into an app. So what are we gonna do? We'll use the standard Nix packages make derivation, give it a name, propagated build inputs, which we need at runtime, right? Python environment. So Python env pulls everything together and then we pull that in as a dependency. We define the source and then in the install phase, this is where the magic happens. We create an out folder and in the out folder, we're going to create a shell script and in that shell script we exec and then we can reach into the python env get the python interpreter from there and then we can also reach into our source code to get the main.py and then pass the rest of the arguments and that's it so where we use these substitutions is where the magic is because these will refer to a nix store location rather than a hard-coded path then we make it executable and we have some more metadata so if we're in the sample app Python folder, you can see that the default.nix, if you paste it over from the article, paste the source code into main.py, other.py is just one line. Now we run nix build and we get a result folder with the sample app Python binary. 
So now we're at the point where we can do a local only test of pulling this package into NixOS. So as long as we have the code cloned locally, that being the main limitation, we can install this onto our NixOS system. So just add sample app Python to your system packages and then we have to tell it what that means because that's not part of Nix packages. So we add a package override or overlay for it and we say sample app Python is equal to, first of all, we get the default.nix file and we pass the full path. So you'll have to change this first bit depending on where you cloned the education repo. And then after that, we use it when we create the call package. So anything in your installed packages needs to be a product of call package. We pass it that default.nix file that we just loaded, and then we can pass in some arguments. So the source, we will pass another full path for that. And then the subder will reach into the repo and get sample app Python. And you can run that magical command, switch your system over and see it in action. So let's see that happening for real. So using only local files rather than remote from GitHub, we just add sample app Python to our system packages. Then we can cut and paste from the article here, paste it in, Save it, you can see the full path, just make sure you update that if you do this on your end. And then we can run the sudo nixos rebuild switch. Let that run. Then once it's done, you should have the sample app Python binary available on your path yet again. So that's fun, but rebuilding the entire NixOS system to test one little package is a little annoying. We can use this trick with default.nix, where if you put default.nix in a blank folder, then you can treat it as if it's your NixOS system, but only compile that little piece. So let's look at what it looks like to use this default.nix testbed before actually going and testing with the full NixOS. You can catch most errors in this way. So if you clone down from GitHub, this 178 has a NixOS folder with nothing in it but a default.nix and a few other files. And if we copy and paste here, you'll see this is exactly what we just put in our NixOS config file. Instead, we're gonna put it in a slightly different format in default.nix. This allows us to test without rebuilding our whole system. We can just rebuild this one piece, and if it works, we know it's gonna work in NixOS more or less. So I just ran nix build, and now I can run simple app Python just the same, and it works using local paths and default.nix. Now that we've tried it locally, we can swap out source and subder as well as the default.nix to come from GitHub so that we don't have to have anything cloned locally to use this. So we can upgrade our snippet to instead of using local paths, use remote paths from GitHub. You'll see fetch URLs right here, full path to the file on GitHub, and we have blank SHAs. Same thing for fetch from GitHub for the source. If we run nix build, we get a SHA error. So I take that, paste the SHA into the top blank SHA, rerun Nix build, we get another SHA error after it downloads, copy that, put it in the bottom SHA, rerun Nix build again, that time it worked, and we can run result bin sample app Python, and we're good to go. Now let's take our work from our default on Nix testbed and paste it over to Nix OS so that we can confirm that it actually builds the system and works. We should have sample app Python when we're done. So finally, we can test this in NixOS. We're actually gonna take directly from the default.nix we were just messing with, take that sample app Python piece, paste it into your package overrides and save it, and then run sudo nixos rebuild switch. Let that run. Once that's done, you can run sample app Python and it runs just like before. So that's what we were going for. That's it for this video. We created a Python application, ran it in NixOS, and did all kinds of local testing, and figured out how to use default.nix as a local testbed, and then we built and installed it from the GitHub source and got the same result. So if you liked this video, subscribe. We're all about taking back tech, rebuilding things from scratch, self-hosting, and much more. So thanks for watching. See you for the next one.